tell me, Emily, what is the symbol for momentum? In lowercase p. In lowercase p, very well said. In lowercase p stands for momentum. What is the equation for momentum, Jenkins? Oh, mass times velocity. Mass times velocity. What is missing from this equation, Mohit? Um, maybe a scalar sign of velocity. A, a, a scalar sign? sign? A vector <laughs> sign on velocity and on momentum. Remember, momentum and velocity are both vectors. What are the dimensions on momentum? That What special name do we give to kilograms times meters per second? What? What was the question? What special name do we give kilograms times meters per second? No, we don't. It doesn't have one. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Yeah. It's left out like that. All right, so momentum, kilograms, meters per second, we don't have a special name. What? is Newton's second law. Bailey. Uh, second law. Oh wait, yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. Newton's second law. Uh, second law. John. Vectors. Vectors over the force and the acceleration. This is no longer Newton's second law. Who can tell me what is Newton's second law now that we have read chapter 9? Glad. Is the derivative of the moment of the sign? Is? Is the net force? The net force, where force and momentum are vectors. That is now Newton's second law, where the sum of the forces equals the derivative of momentum with respect to time. Momentum is mass times velocity, so this is derivative with respect, of time, with respect to time of mass times velocity. Using the chain rule, we get the derivative of mass with respect to time, with respect to uh, times velocity, plus mass times the derivative of, derivative of velocity with respect to time. The derivative of velocity with respect to time, of course, ca course Catherine, is? Acceleration. acceleration. So what is the assumption that we have made so far up until chapter 9 in AP Physics with respect to Newton's second law, John? Mass stays constant. That the mass stays constant. So we have assumed that the derivative of mass with respect to time is equal to zero, that the mass of the object will stay constant throughout. Is that going to be the case from here on out? Yes. Well, pretty much the mass will stay constant. We'll talk about uh, we'll talk about what happens sometimes, but mostly, for the most part, we don't deal with rockets where, where, with a rocket where the uh, mass of the object is going to be changing that much. Um, sometimes we talk about it a little bit, but for the most part, uh, what you need to understand about Newton's second law is that it is the net force equals the derivative of momentum with respect to time, and then that is not the same as net force equals mass times acceleration because it uh, allows for the mass to change. Okay, we now have conservation of momentum. What is the equation for conservation of momentum? Sierra? vector symbols over there? Yes. What's missing from this equation? Yes, sir. In the book, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, like split into two, like P1 plus P. We'll, we'll get there. We're not there yet, but we just <laughs> need the, the basic equation. Okay. Just the sum up, right? You're, you're getting the specifics there. This is just the net momentum initial equals the net momentum final. So if we add up the moment, initial momentum of the system, that will equal the final momentum of the system, the sum of that. Last year, when was this true? Conservation momentum. It was true, Meg? Uh, that actually was not the case. It's not, it was not true when there was no friction. When was this true? 
<laughs> During all collisions and explosions is when this was true. That's not the way we're going to phrase it this year. This is true when the net force or the derivative of momentum as a function of time is equal to zero. If the derivative of momentum as a function of time is equal to zero, is the momentum changing? No. There you go. Basically what it means is all forces are internal. During a collision or explosion, you're going to have forces involved in pushing the object away from itself, right? But all those forces are going to be internal to that system of objects. So please remember that this right here is the derivation of conservation of momentum. It's rather simple, but it is an important one. And believe it or not, one that comes up on the AP test, not just in this form, but also in the form of uh, determining the conservation of angular momentum, which we are not going to talk about just yet, but I bring it up because it is the exact same derivation, only with an L instead of a P. Um, but you guys tend to forget it. So I'm bringing it up now in the hopes that maybe you'll remember it now that I've mentioned something that doesn't make any sense to you yet. Maybe it'll stick in your heads. We'll see. 